there are certain situations in inferential statistics where we want to compare two population parameters. Now in your introductory course of statistics, many times we compare the two population parameters of either two means with dependent samples, two means with independent samples, and two proportions. In this video we're going to look at a problem where we sample from two groups and we're going to look at comparing two population um, means. So let's look at our scenario here and then we'll talk through what exactly it is that we need to do in order to determine the correct process to apply. So this says researchers at a university want to determine whether the reaction time in seconds of males differs from that of females. The researchers randomly selected 19 females and 16 males and measured their reaction time using a specific test. The results are female students are these numbers and the male students are these numbers. And it says test whether there is a difference in reaction times of the males and the females at the 5% level of significance. So here I want to look at comparing the um, reaction, the mean reaction time between the females and the males to see if there is a difference. Now they didn't give me just the data of one of the groups and say information about the population of another group and ask me to do a test to that comparison number. What they did is they actually sampled from the females and sampled from the males and got data from both groups. So here's where it is a uh, sampled from two groups scenario instead of just a one group. Now the other thing is that this is not data that is put in pairs. This is a group of data for the females and a group of data for the males. And it would be a scenario that really wouldn't warrant us to group it in pairs. Pairs would be like if you had some sort of thing that you thought would be a lurking variable that you would need to make sure that you kind of reduce its uh, effect on things by keeping it in matched pairs. So like um, stores before and after, some sort of manufacturing process before and after, because you look at the workforce and that kind of stuff that possibly would be another thing that would affect it. Um, you could do like reaction time of a dominant hand and a non-dominant hand, so per person that would be another thing where you would want to do matched pairs. But that type of dependent sample, the data is going to be definitely paired up in data values as well as a possibility where maybe they gave you the differences of all the data values in this setup or they gave you statistics on the differences of the data values that were paired up. That's when you have dependent. What we have is independent samples. We have just a group of numbers from the females and a group of numbers from the males. Now this video is going to be looking at how you do this process if you're looking at a TI-84 or 83 calculator usage. And the first thing you want to do is you want to enter the data in your lists. So remember to do that on the calculator. You're going to push stat and then it'll highlight on edit and you just want to push enter and you're going to get list one, list two, list three, etc. So you want to put all these data values in list one and all the data values for the males in list two before we get started. So I'm going to take a minute to have you pause the video, look at the data values, and enter them into your calculator. Okay, now that they're entered into your calculator, the next thing you want to do is to set up the null and alternate hypothesis and then go through the process of doing the hypothesis test. Now we want to test, that's how I know it's a hypothesis test or if it instead of being a confidence interval. So test whether there is a difference in reaction times of the males and the females at the 5% level of significance. So the first thing we need to do is state our null and our alternate hypothesis. Now because they're sample from two groups independent, your null is that mu sub 1, the population mean of the first group, or sometimes you could do mu sub f for females if you want it specific to this particular scenario, is equal to mu sub 2. And then in the 
alternate hypothesis, you could go by what they ask you to test, and this just says, is there a difference? So if just ask, is there a difference? And it doesn't say which way, like greater than or less than or anything like that, faster or slower, just is there a difference? Then your alternate is going to be mu sub 1, not equal to mu sub 2. Okay, now you've got this data in your lists. This is your null and alternate hypothesis. So the next thing you want to do is for doing the hypothesis test with sampling from two groups for the mean, you're going to do the 2-SAMP T test. So to get to there, you go stat, cursor right to tests, and you'll see 2-SAMP T test there. Now once you push that, you're going to have to tell it whether you have data or whether you have stats. And we have the data from both of the groups. So you want to make sure you cur cursor where the data is highlighted and push enter. Then it'll ask you where your information's at. So you, across from your first group, you're going to have L1 and then L2 from the second. And then frequency list is just put the number one after it. Don't have a list after it. We don't have any frequency list that goes around along with either of these groups. And then after that, you're going to have to say what your alternate hypothesis is. So for the alternate hypothesis, you're going to have that it's not equal to mu sub 2. So pick the not equal to. After that, it's going to ask you if it's pooled. For this particular application, choose no. It's not pooled. And then calculate. Once you calculate it, then it's going to give you a report. It's going to show you mu1 not equal to mu2 at the very top of the screen. And that's just to reiterate the alternate hypothesis so you can double check and make sure that you have it right. And then after that, it's going to give you the test statistic t. So t is equal to negative 1.2787. And then underneath the test statistic in all of these reports for the TI calculator in the hypothesis testing, it gives you the p-value. It doesn't actually say p-value though, it just says p equals because they didn't want to waste the space on the screen to actually type out p-value. So right under, it gives you your alternate hypothesis, then it gives you your t equal for the test statistic, um, t for this case because we did the t-test, and then it says p, which is the p-value, and for this particular question, it comes up as 0 0.2114. Now we want to compare that p-value with alpha. The p-value is 0 0.2114. Alpha is your level of significance in decimal form, so it's 0.05. And this p-value, remember, if the p is low, the null must go. So when p-value is smaller than alpha is when you reject the null. If the p-value is bigger than alpha, you cannot reject the null. And this p-value is bigger, the 0.2 is bigger than 0.05, so we cannot reject the null. And since we cannot reject the null, the data is not significant to indicate the alternate. So we want to write a sentence. And I don't have room to write the sentence on the board, so I'm just going to say it out. And if you need to replay it, you can replay it. So we want to state the level of significance, our decision on whether we reject the null or not, and then whether our... Um, data indicates or is significant to indicate what the alternate was saying. So we're going to say for this problem, at the 5% level of significance, do not reject the null. The data is not significant to indicate that the reaction time of the females and the males differs.